So the cool part when you're when you're messing around with Builder though, um, you can drop things in and I have some fun custom components. So we'll, we'll drop in like Casey. So if I drop in Casey, that is actually a React component that I just pulled over and dropped in. So there's there's some more. And those are automatically going to be on the page the next time the static gen occurs for that. And if I if I run this um, localhost, so if I go over here to localhost, I have the dev server up and running. Uh, there's often, oh, you know what? It's not published, that's why. Let me switch the URL real quick. Yeah, so I can I can either view it out on the site um, using kind of this cache um, busting uh, URL that we have, or I can view that on localhost so that I can do more development um, on my server. And so I guess you have a Next.js server running in the background. Is that what you have, or is there a I do. client? Okay. I, I do have Next.js. Yep. So here's kind of here's the code and here's the server running. So it's just npm init or npm run dev on the back end there. So it seems like then as a developer you can work in kind of normal Next.js world, but then if there's like a marketing person on your team, they can come and take some of the components you created and move them around themselves. Yeah, exactly. And they can they can design whole pages. So what's cool about um, having these pages set up like this, when you come into it, you can actually take and do different versions of it too. So depending on targeting, like say you pulled someone in from some marketing page that is all about Angular in my case. Hmm. When I hit that Angular one, I could actually swap out my front page. And this could all be about Angular at this point and like drive them kind of that way and kind of iterate on that targeting every time I want to deal with it.